Hey there, comic book friends. I'm Travis, and this is another edition of No Capes, where I talk about comic books that don't have to do superheroes and or Ethan doesn't review them or review them along with me. Only two books this week. Really small week in general for comics. I think what I only got like six or seven books total. So let's start right out with The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys. This is issue number one from Dark Horse uh, Comics. Um, great book. Um, Written by by the guys who did um, Umbrella Academy, if you're familiar with that, back in the day. And it's got uh, Becky Cool and doing art on it, which is the biggest reason why I was jumping on to pick it up. I really like um, Becky's work, so I, I wanted to um, check it out because of that. Um, <clears throat> really interesting first book. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, it's basically the premise is, is this is some near future reality kind of a thing um, um, there's the cities um, in particular battery city in this and there's like this kind of des desert deserted area outside of the cities um, at one time there were these kind of superhero guys superhero in the sense that they kind of fought the the good fight um, did wear masks and stuff like that um, you know but I don't think they were capes and whatnot but they um, they were um, um, called um, the Fabulous Killjoys, and they all died. They're all gone. Something happened to them, and supposedly we find out in the story that they were that this girl here was hanging with them, and they were kind of protecting her. That she was viewed as being some sort of potential messiah type person, um, for whatever. Um, the The comic starts out with our main character and her cat crawling out of a body bag. Um, in, in this, um, and um, kind of craziness ensues. There's androids in this thing. There's um, these things called uh, Draculoids. Right here's a picture of the Draculoids. And what they are is they're people who are wearing these masks, and these masks kind of turn them into kind of a zombie security team of sorts. It seems like. Um, they put those, they put these masks on, and they see reality different than everybody else. They see it in black and white. Um, it kind of makes you hallucinate, um, and, and you enforce these crazy laws out in the desert. Basically, they just go around kind of butchering people. Um, they're actually giving a given a quota on how many body bags they have to fill in a week, and they have to fill that quota, um, kind of a thing. They also, um, um, you know, it, it, if they catch you and they decide they're not going to kill you, they give you a choice: either they're going to kill you. Or you put on one of those masks, and you put this mask on, and basically it takes over your mind, and you become a, uh, um, a draculoid also. Um, there's androids in this. In this, um, There are these androids that are um, kind of like sex bots, it, it seems, um, and they're addicted to um, this synthetic um, kind of happy pill. Seems like the youth culture lives out in the desert, and um, is just trying to maintain some sort of semblance of life. Um, they don't really follow any rules. They're just kind of wild and, and crazy. They fight the Dracoids when they see them and whatnot. Um, but anyway, um, don't know that I'm explaining the whole thing really well. But anyway, there's this, she's viewed as being this prophet. There's some people in Battle City who are kind of like the corporate overlords. Um, what's the corporation called? Let me remember what it's called here. Corporation is called Better Living Industries. Um, Better Li Living Industries. Anyway, they, um, they're they hunting for her, it seems like. Because one of their rules about filling all these body bags is the body bags have to be laid out in the open where they can be easily seen. They watch them by satellite. Trucks come and pick them up and that sort of thing. But um, um, the watching all this, so there's got to be some, there's some something about having to watch these body bags, knowing that she's going to come back or whatever. Um, really interesting. People have asked me, the cat, is the cat, uh, what kind of part does the cat play? I don't know yet. The cat hangs with her all the time. She talks to the cat, like the cat understands her. I don't know if that's just her weird quirk that she talks to her animals or, or what. Um, but I like it. It's pretty cool. I think it's like, um, I want to say it's five or six issues, I think is what it is. Um, a limited series. Um, uh, but, but pretty cool. If you like kind of post-apocalypse, um, I'll throw in Blade Runner because Blade Runner is that kind of a near future, 
kind of a reality, kind of the same thing in the sense that it's you know they do have some and synthroids, some androids, and 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 things are desolate and that sort of thing. Um, but not Blade Runner in any other fashion. But still, really cool. Really enjoyed it. Um, I, I recommend it. And the only other book I got for uh, No Capes is, of course, uh, Six Gun Gorilla, issue number one of six. Outstanding comic, way more than I thought I was going to be. I mean, I was pretty stoked. Uh, you know, how, how do you beat a silverback wearing a poncho uh, carrying six shooters? I, I mean, that to me, that was pretty cool right there, like some sort of spaghetti western. Well, this is set in um, the future. Um, we're on a faraway planet. Um, but there's some clockwork, steampunk, um, flavor to the thing with the guns that most of them are shooting, except for him, he's shooting big, big, huge guns. Um, so shooting these like, you know, like instead of being bang, bang, bang guns, they're razor discs that cut people up and stuff. They're, the trains they're riding on are actually giant tortoises that have boxes tied to the side of them. They ride inside the cars on the side of these giant tortoises. There's this giant civil war going on between the grays and the blues. And we've got this main character who's not the gorilla, this other guy who's part of a suicide squad that they've either signed up because they don't want to live, they've either got terminal cancer or something like that. They hate life, want to die, or they're um, death row inmates and they want to go out with a bang as opposed to just you know being stuck in death row and having their head cut off or living their life in prison. Um, they are given a, an ocular implant, an, an implant in their eye, so people back in, in the rich cities can watch them die, basically. They watch them battle through first person, get this adrenaline rush and whatnot. Um, our main character, he's heartbroken, he's out there, crazy stuff happens, most people get butchered around him. Um, he meets a, a general that's dying, the general's last wish is to get this clock back to his um, wife, this kind of touching moment, you got people in the control booths, the producers trying to decide whether they want to show that on TV or cut to something else. And this big giant gorilla shows up and saves him from these desperados that were going to um, going to kill them and rob them. Great comic, great art. Um, it's just it was just really, really fun and really, really cool. And a lot more, you know, a lot more to the comic than um, what than what I really expected it really expected it to be. There he is. Howdy. And so pretty awesome. Six issues. Boom Studios. Another comic I definitely recommend if you like just kind of fun alternate reality um, um, shoot 'em up, who knows what else kind of a book. Um, great fun. Um, yeah. Pick it up. And that's it. Only two no capes. I'm done. See you next week.